Hey guys, welcome back to Fitco. Today we're doing another brain style of one puzzle. This one is called Drunk Passenger. It's a probability puzzle. And this one is pretty famous to be honest. And this is the first medium problem that we'll be doing on this channel. So basically just to explain the problem real quick. We've been given 100 passengers waiting to board a plane. And so they're all like uh, standing in a line and they've all been given a number. And... The scenario is that the nth, nth passenger in line has a ticket for the seat number N. So basically, nth passenger is assigned the N number seat, right? Now, what would happen usually is the first person would go and sit on the first seat, the second person would go and sit on the second seat, and so on. But the problem is that being drunk, the first person in line picks a random seat, and that random seat can be equally likely between 1 and 100, like any whole number between those two values and the problem with this is that so let's say person number one sits on seat number five now what happens is person two to four all of them sit on their own seat but person number five now has to pick a random seat from all of the remaining seats that haven't been occupied yet so that could have mean that person number five sits on let's say seat number 64 now all of the passengers from 6 all the way to 63 sit on their own assigned seats. But 64 now also has an option. Since his own seat is occupied by person number 5, he too has to sit on a random seat. Now let's say person number 64 sits on seat number 1. Now what happens is for all of the passengers from 65 all the way to 100, all of them get to sit on their own seats. Right. So this is just one example of how this particular situation could play out. Now, what we've been asked is, if this keeps on happening, what is the probability that the last one that the last th that in this case the one hundredth person gets to board the plane on his own seat, right? Gets to sit on his own seat, which would be seat number one hundred. So, in my opinion, this is a pretty tough problem. I had to like really go through a bunch of solutions to really get a good understanding of it. So, just to give you guys a hint before coming to the proper solution. Try to think of a small case, right? So try to think of what would happen if there's, there were just five passengers and we were asked the probability of the fifth person to get his own seat or four passengers or three passengers or something like this, right? So that you can try to figure out a pattern. So the best way to talk about the solution for this problem is just try to visualize what is going to happen. So let's just start with random values right so let's say person number one starts off right now since person number one chooses a seat at random it could be one it could be 100 or it could be any value between 2 to 99 and there's a particular reason why i'm representing all the different cases in this particular manner and you'll understand why in a bit so basically what happens is if person number one chooses seat number one now try to think about this this and okay so i'm also going to define two events I'll denote them by a tick and a cross. So the tick denotes the event that the last person, the 100th person on to board the plane will get to sit on their own seat, right? So I'm denoting that by a tick and denoting the case where that doesn't happen by a cross. And so basically we have to find out the probability of a tick or the probability of success, right? And this will be called fail. So yeah, coming back to the case we were taking, right? So if person number one picks num seat number one, right, at ra by random, what happens in that case is all these guys from 2 to 99 and actually 100 included, all of them will be able to sit on their own seats since those seats will be vacant. So in that case, it is guaranteed without any randomness that we are going to eventually hit success, right? So now let's think about the case where person number one chooses seat 100. Now, what, now in that case, since seat 100 is now already occupied, no matter what happens, person 100 is going to sit on, is not going to be able to sit on seat 100. Well, actually what's going to happen is all of these guys are still going to sit on their own seats. And when person 100 comes along, he's going to have to sit on seat number one, right? So in this case, without any randomness, we are guaranteed to hit failure, right? Now what happens in the middle case, right? This is where the entire loop comes to picture, right? So what happens here is just 
take a, a random value, right? So let's say person number one picks up C15, right? What happens now is if you try to think about it, all of the passengers from C number two all the way to 14 get to sit on their own seats. But now when person 15's chance comes around, he's going to see that, okay, so person number one sat on my seat, so I'm going to choose a seat at random. Now what is person number 15's choices? Either he could sit on seat one since that is not occupied yet. He could sit on seat 100 since that is not occupied yet. Or he could sit on any seat from 16 all the way to 99. So now we see three similar cases. And now you're going to start to see the loop. Again, if person 15 sits on seat number one, then we are guaranteed to hit success. Why is that? Because each of these guys from 16 to 100 are going to get to sit on their own seats. If person number 15 sits on seat 100, then no matter what happens, we're going to eventually hit failure, right? Because person 100 already has person 15 sitting on a seat, so he can't choose his own seat. In fact, he'll actually have to choose seat number 15. So these two cases are uh, exactly the same as before. Now what happens for this case? Again, pick a random value. Let's say person 15 chose seat number 84. Now what happens is from person 16 all the way to person 83, all of these guys get to sit on their own seats because all of those seats are vacant. Now what person 84 sees is that person 15 is sitting on his seat and so he has to again pick a seat at random. And again, we get those three cases. Either he sits on seat number one, or he sits on seat number 100, or he has to choose a seat, seat at random from 85 all the way to 89.99. Again, the exact same cases. This will lead to success. This will lead to failure. So basically, if 84 chooses any value from this range, we're just, again, delaying the decisive moment. The decisive moment comes when either you should pick seat number one or seat number 100. And I forgot to mention this right from the start. So since the first guy has a probability of choosing seat number one of one upon 100, and uh, the probability of choosing seat 100 as one over 100, you can see that both these probabilities are the same, right? So it's the exact same for person 15. So the person 15 has all of these seats to pick from, but the probability, probability that person 15 chooses seat number one or the probability that the pick person 15 chooses seat number 100 is the exact same. Since he's choosing a seat at random and P of 1 is just 1 over all the seats that are available and P of 100 is also 1 over all the seats that are available. So at each step, the probability of success is the same as the probability of failure. The exact same happens for 84. 84 has seats to pick from. Well, there's one over here. There's 15 seats over here and there's one over here. So yeah, in total, there's 17 seats to choose from. And out of all of those seats, there's a probability of one over 17 to pick seat number one. There's a probability of one over 17 to pick seat number 100. And there's a probability of 15 over 17 that we delay the decisive process even further, right? So at any step, the probability of success is equal to the probability of failure. Now what, now just to like, finish off this case, eventually what's going to happen is either someone's going to pick one or 100 and we're going to know what's going to happen or this case keeps on going until we come to the 99th person. Now for the 99th person, you can either pick seat number 100 or one. And again, one would lead to success. 100 would lead to failure. So over here, the probabilities are one by two for both cases. So we see that yes, the probabilities of success and failure are again the exact same. So if I were to say that this game is basically a loop where the probability of success is equal to the probability of failure at any step and all the other cases just delay that decisive step where we either take 1 or 100. So basically for the entire game the probability of these two cases remain the exact same. And we also know that eventually one of these two cases have to hit. In the worst case, it comes down to the 99th guy. So these two cases have to add up to 1. So we can say that the probability of success is indeed equal to 1 by 2. So this is the Brainstiller website solution. I'll recommend you guys to pause and go over this solution once. Try to think about 
the perspective these guys are talking about is the exact same solution exact same thinking it's just that these guys talk about it in a slightly new perspective and i'll also be talking about the follow-up question after this so coming to the follow-up question uh, which basically asks us the probability of the second last person right now try to think of it in the exact same manner right try to think of it uh, as a loop as we just talked about for the 100th person so if person number one chooses the seat one or 100 in this case then this would automatically mean success try to pause and think about it and if person number one chooses the seat 99 then this automatically means we won't succeed and for every case in between from 2 to 98 the process just keeps on continuing as new guy let's say uh, person number one chooses 74 now 74 is going to have to make the exact same three decisions either choose 1 or 100 or choose 99 or choose anything in between which would be in 75 all the way to 98 and since these are two values and this is one value the probability of success is always going to be twice as much as the probability of failure right and all of and both these values have to add up to one so that just means that the probability of success has to be two by three and this is indeed the solution as you can see over here so in the description i'm also going to provide a link to a ted ed video which is basically the exact same probability puzzle it's just a different scenario right but the underlying concept is the exact same and i think that the way they those guys have explained the solution is pretty incredible so i strongly recommend you guys to go and watch that video after this if you still have a few doubts about i hope you guys understood this solution and thanks for watching